Hey guys, how you guys doing? I know it's been a while since I have posted anything, but I've been busy because of the holidays and stuff like that, so... And Happy New Year's for those, because today's New Year's Eve. Anyways, um, today I was going to show you pathfinding again, because I found a bug. And I'm going to show you what things you need to use, what functions you need to use in order to make it work. Basically, it's just two different functions, and I'm going to show you how I did it in the other one. The one with the car or tank, whatever you remember from the last video. Um, let's see. Alright. In, in the search cell, or whatever you called it from the last video, um, in a constructor or search cell, when I set the ID, I set the ID to be this, and actually it's completely wrong, just by one... And it's supposed to be plus X and not Z. So I made a mistake there, so I apologize. And I remember there was another bug, but I might be, because I... Because basically, um, for my final, for one of my classes, I, I, was, I, I used um, this pathfinding. But it was in C sharp, but... So maybe that's why for a transfer, I kind of made another bug by accident. But I think it's completely fine now, so you don't have to worry about it. But if I... But in the future, if I find anything wrong with it, then I'll make another video. But otherwise, I think that's the only bug right here for now. Um. But yeah, so basically, uh, I fixed that bug already, and and in here, I'm gonna be telling you how to use it or how I used it to see. Basically, it's only two functions you'll be needing. But before I show you the two functions, there's a section that I have to show you before I do it. I think, I don't know if I said in the other videos, but if I didn't, then I'll tell you right now. Right here, when you set the, in the let's see what function is this, the find path. When you set the function, the start and end, I set this to be this. Uh, my, and before I keep continuing again, my path running is completely different than the, ones I, than the one I did in the video from last time. Not extremely different, but a little bit different. And I set I set mine to be this. And basically, what this function is doing is basically is setting the current position, the x, to be divided by the cell size. Uh, each cell ha um, has a different has a size. And my in the one that I'm using here is basically the size of 20 units. So each cell is 20 20 length, 20 units on each side. So I, I divide it by the cell size. And I do that because so that will be it will be easier to do it, the calculations. And when I get the let's see what is that? Let's see if I remember where exactly it's at. Sorry guys, let me find it real quick. I think it's in the pathfinding. Oh, seriously. Okay, here. When I set the path to take, whatever you called it, when he when he has found the path, the goal, and I set the path to take to be to do this, I actually multiply it back to the cell size. So basically, you get the information back what you need. So basically, that's what I'm doing. Is and I only do that in order just so you you could calculate things easier. So this is what this stuff is doing. Um, let's see what else am I doing here. So now I'm gonna show you what what functions you will be needing. And sorry guys, I'm kind of sick right now, so I apologize if I talk weird or anything. But anyways, this is my update function. And I know that my pathfinding is actually in my player my player class, but the way my teacher did this um, project was completely completely different. And I was trying to actually create a pathfinding. Uh, file, but I wasn't make, wasn't able to make it work with the functions I needed to use, so I did it in my player class. And basically, my my teacher actually created everything. The project, all we had to implement was the pathfinding. So, all everything else was his. Just letting you know. So, but, but my pathfinding is mine. But anyways, in my update function, let's see. 
basically I create a state um, and I actually let's, I'll show you guys what I'm using in there basically in here I'm saying randomize I'm actually not even using this so no, don't worry about that I'm actually randomizing and that basically is going to randomize a goal for me a position and then once I randomize it I can search for it and while I'm searching for, for it and find a goal then you just go to path finding goal so that is what the switch statement is doing. So I randomized the goal, what basically what this is doing. So I'll show you guys right here. I randomize it, blah blah blah, and I set the I set it to the target position. And basically, once this it gets out of there, I set the I, I set it to searching. And when it goes to searching, basically what this if statement is doing. Basically checking if it's out of bounds. If it's out of bounds, then I clear the list, the visited list, open list, and stuff like that. I set the file and go to false, initialize the false, and I randomize it all over again until it actually it's actually inside the bounds. And also, I'm also I'm also checking if anything is on its view. And basically, on in this case, basically it's a pickup. I have pickups on the screen for you on the game if you didn't notice in the previous video and basically they're kind of I call it coins but I'm saying if it's something that's on the view on its view and it hasn't been locked in to a coin and I set the target position to be to that new target pause and I set a new target pause in here but it's not really important because you pretty sure you didn't even have this function but this is where I'm getting the information from target pause I cleared the uh, the path to take. I initialize false, found go to false, and I find the path again. And and I don't think I need this in here. I put it. Oh yeah, I do. So then, if yeah, if it has found the goal, then just go to path finding goal. Otherwise, if there's nothing on its view, then it'll randomize to that position. So I path find to that find path, and then once it has found the goal, I'll change the path state to found goal. <clears throat> so in here, basically I'm sending a, a distance to target. Basically I'm sending the next path pause minus my position. And that's basically going to be creating a vector to that certain cell, and it's going to accelerate to there. So it's going to accelerate to the first cell, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, and to the next one, and so on. And basically what the other ones is doing here. I don't even have to explain these because you don't really need those. It's not like you guys are going to have those in your game. But basically, once I'm there already, once I, I'm in the last cell, I clear it. And initialize false. And found go to false and randomize all over again, so it's gonna go go back to a loop, you know. So it's basically like like a cycle. And yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. There's no reason to explain these because it's not like you guys can have it. But if you, but I'll explain it anyways, so you could know what I'm doing here anyway. So I'm saying, I already this is saying if if um is the if it's something on its view, and if it's type pickup, then just pathfind to there, and that's it. And yeah, that's the only two functions you need. The find path and the next path pause. That's the only two functions you're going to be needing when you're creating the, your pathfinding. So, it's not really a... Like a lot of functions you need to be calling, but you will need to create it like. But then you have to make it really smart with the path, with my path state, and stuff like that. And it's gonna be looking back and forth, back and forth. So I'll show it to you guys one more time. Come on now, there you go. Alright. So basically those are those are the coins. And basically I still have to improve it a little bit more, but 
but just just showing you that it works. And basically, when I click on it, it will actually path. I'll it will redo its pathfinding again to, to a different target position. So every time I click, it will change its target position. And the red one, like I mentioned, the red one is the one the the path is going to be taking. The other ones are just the path open and path um, visit it. But yeah, basically that's it. Um, what was something else I was going to tell you guys? Not really, actually. I know debug is going to be different. And how am I debugging it? Oh yeah, and I was thinking about that. I'm going to show you how I'm getting my my um, my cell blocked. This is basically how I'm getting my cell blocked here. And I'm gonna show you what this is doing. Basically, you get cell state. It's gonna check that coordinate from the x and y, or basically z in this uh, situation. Um, basically, it's gonna go through there and saying if it's if it's colored in. It's gonna basically. Well, let me explain it again. Uh, my grid is basically consists of little cells um little cells and each cell is blanked or black I don't, I don't know how he did it i think it's uh, it's cleared and if it's colored then it's blocked and basically base uh what this is doing you're saying if it's colored then you say it's blocked you just return blocked otherwise just return the cell to be free and this is just saying if it goes off screen if it goes off screen, the cell is free. Otherwise, otherwise, if it's not colored in, then just set the set it free. Okay. Might as well just set this to block, right? Because you can't even go out out of bounds, anyways. I mean, I didn't do this, so I'm letting you know the teacher did this. Man, it makes sense to be blocked if it's off screen, doesn't it? I mean, I understand if it should be free because there's nothing in there, but you shouldn't be going out of bounds anyways. So, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, that's how I'm getting my cell blocked. It's saying if it's colored in, oh, sorry. Um, if it's colored in, they set it to block. Otherwise, it's free. Uh, let's say, is there anything else am I supposed to show you? And dun dun dun. Before I take off, real quick. Okay, and this is, and then, like I mentioned, other video. This is what I'm doing to draw the my cells. To draw the pathfinding, and just drawing the square, just coloring it, coloring it in with any color I want, and with that position. And it's kind of confusing. I know it says X and Y, but it's actually X and Z. But the way the teacher actually made this was completely weird. And while I was doing the pathfinding, I was getting confused a lot because of X and Y is supposed to be X and Z, but it works anyways. Um. Yeah, this is how I'm drawing it, and I'll show you how I'm doing it. Draw a square. And basically, this is what it's doing. It's counting the GL vertex, and it's setting the position X times the cell size. And you know all this stuff already. This is basically open GL stuff. Setting the position, the X, Y, and Z. You see what I mean? It's sending the Y and the Z, but you understand it's supposed to be the position of the Z. Um, and basically, this is what's creating the squares on the on the grid. And yeah, that's basically how I'm doing this pathfinding in this game or demonstration. It's not really it's not really a game, anyways. But yeah, so all you're gonna be needing. 
It's just the path, find path function and the next path path function. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So if you liked it, subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or send me a message, and I'll try to elaborate a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure what other videos I'm supposed to be doing next. I don't know. I was thinking of doing like an OBJ parser reader or whatever you want to call it. But I'm not sure. I mean, I already have it done. I just don't know if I should do it or not. I don't know if a lot of people... It's not really hard to do, but... But to make it a really good, a really good uh, OBJ parser, then... Then I can show you how to do one. It's really good, actually. But... I don't know, it depends on you guys. If you actually want me to do it, let me know. Send me a message, comment on the video and below. Otherwise, if you have any other questions, like other videos, I should, other tutorials that probably I should be doing, let me know. And, you know, and I'll see what I can do. So, hope you guys have a happy New Year's, and I'll see you guys later. And subscribe if you like, alright? And pass this tutorial around with your friends or anybody else's so they could find this video alright and also um, before I let you go um, I actually uh, have um, a blogger where I'm actually put this all these videos there so I may put it in the description otherwise you don't really have to look at it anyways <laughs> but if if you wanna tell other people about it then uh, you could just send them out the website and they'll find it there anyways but, alright, I'll see you guys in the next video if I find what, I, what to do next. Otherwise, I probably might continue on my Fallout videos. I haven't done one actually for a while. I've been playing a lot of Skyrim, so. Uh, and also, I have Skyrim. In, 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 I already have Skyrim installed in this computer, so I'm still deciding if I should do, stop Fallout for a while and do Skyrim for a bit. But, I don't know. I'll figure that out. Alright, see you guys.